Hello, everybody. Welcome to Black Blockchain Consultants. This is a special edition of Blockchain Chat, where we talk about the blockchain industry from our point of view. Uh, at Black Blockchain Consultants, we are all about the business of blockchain. So whether that's NFTs, tokenization, um, how blockchain is going to be used in different industries, we're all about introducing to you, you to new careers and career paths within, within the industry. Um, helping you start your blockchain-based businesses, and uh, investing. I forgot the tagline. Go ahead, Talisha. <laughs> investing in projects. <laughs> investing in projects, whether you're investing time or money into a project, and ultimately, this is a $3.1 trillion industry. We need and want representation, and based on what Ali is telling us tonight, other people want us to be represented as well. So, um, we have Ali Yinka here, AKA Ali. She is with Black Women Blockchain Council. And uh, there was an interesting press release. So I told y'all a long time ago, the best thing to do to keep up with the industry, or at least one of the things that I do is I have Google alerts anytime something with blockchain and especially blockchain and black people comes up, it shows up in my Google right? My, my daily digest. And uh, the press release or something like that came up. Um, and I'm like, oh, okay, interesting. And the headline was about the fact that this company wants to help 500,000 Black women become blockchain developers. And I clicked on, I'm like, who is that? What are they doing? And all of a sudden, I'm like, I know this group. I know Ali Yinka. So um, I have uh, asked her and asked my partner in crime, Talisha, here to come uh, so that we could have this special edition of Blockchain Chat. I do want to say, if you are not a member of the Discord group where a lot of conversations happen, uh, then you want to come to blackblockchainconsultants.com. It'll lead you directly to the blockchain group. Oh, sorry, to the Discord group so that you are able to continuously connect with us. So um, Talisha, I'm just going to give you a, a couple of seconds to introduce yourself before we bring the guests to honor up. Okay, I'm Talisha Shine. Most of you know me, probably have saw my invite somewhere in there. So thank you for coming. And this is going to be a great conversation. I've been a co-founding member of Black Blockchain Consultants since the beginning, and I'm the tech person on the team. So I do that background if people want to know more in-depth information of how the technology works. But we do, as Sharia said, stated that we are really into the business of blockchain. So this kind of actually goes real well with this conversation, because even with the development, there's a whole lot of people that support developers, not just the people who code. So this is one of those kind of conversations where I think people kind of Think of one thing like, oh, this is so technical and I'm not technical. This actually may be a great conversation for you because you can see exactly where you can fit in and apply your skills, not only just from the technical side, but from that business side as well. Perfect. All right. So Ola Yinka uh, is here from Black Women Blockchain Council. Hello. Hi, ladies. <laughs> it's good to be uh, here. Thank well, you. we are so happy to have you. So um, tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got in the blockchain industry. Well, um, so I come from a financial background. I'm now in compliance. I'm sorry. I'm now in cybersecurity. I have to think about it for a second. <laughs> but um, yeah, I was a chief compliance officer when I was first introduced to Bitcoin. And um, being that I was already in the financial industry and I was more focused on regulatory, I didn't really know how to take it, right? This is a cryptocurrency that's trying to disrupt the way that we approach things, right? And um, the SEC had not weighed in at the time. And so it was, to me, it was an unregistered security at that time. Um, so I kind of tiptoed around it and understood the technology more than anything. And it was actually the technology that brought me on board fully, right? Because after reading about the technology, I realized, okay, well, this thing is powerful and it could really improve our community, the black community. Um, and because of the different type of features, the fact that it's, you know, based, it's, it's motive, it's um, to improve the trustless society that we live in right now. And who better than to benefit from such um, type of, uh, I guess, resolution that it was attempting to bring 
than the black community because we have historically had things that have been done to us um and uh you know we have a hard way of, of trusting people right and um you know this was a way to lift the veil so to speak and allow us to see transparency of a lot of the money movement especially in africa where people will put money in their suitcase, travel aboard overseas, hide it in the cabinets, you know? So it was really interesting for us to latch on. And um, after that, I was just like, you know what? I wanna know who else is out here in this space. And funny enough, Sheree, you and I, we actually connected way before blockchain. Uh, so to see you back in this industry and then to um, meet Talisha and the so many other Black women in this industry was heartwarming. Um, but then I also realized that there's a need for more of us because there were deals and there were, you know, opportunities out there that as a whole can definitely benefit us. So that's why I created Black Women Blockchain Council to promote, uh, raise awareness and educate our community um, on the technology. Uh, and that's where my focus really is, is the technology, because I believe the technology is revolutionary. And I believe that a lot can be created off of the technology that can really benefit our um, community as a whole. You're absolutely right. I mean, I'm seeing the revolution of, you know, um, of DeFi, number one, um, being able to send uh, payments across, you know, states and nations and things like that. We're seeing where, was it Ecuador uh, mm -hmm. that has made Bitcoin its official El currency? I'm sorry? El Salvador. El Salvador. Um, and, you know, and, and I think that more countries are going to start following suit. Um, uh, and, and we're also seeing our counterparts as well really get into it, whether they're super, super rich, you know, you've got the financial institutions now starting to get in, uh, as well as, you know, the ground level uh, people, everyday people like, like uh, the three of us that are here. So what are some of the, the interesting things that you've seen with regards to the industry? Some of the things that some of us here should take a note of or pay attention to? <laughs> Um, well, I'm sure we all agree that a lot has changed. The narrative is one of those things that definitely has changed. Um, you know, when we first started, it was more of a scam, you know, um, and then, you know, it shifted to a scam. Well, maybe it's viable, but it's a money laundering scheme. And now it's um, the, what is it? it? It has some energy consumption issues. So we've graduated, right? <laughs> and now they see it as, as viable. I've seen um, industries go from, let's think about it to let's actually create something. Let's actually allocate some funds and you know, resources by way of people towards building something for us. Shoot, um, what is it? Last year, Visa wasn't in the game. Visa is in the game now. And you know, MasterCard is called. So like, it's not going away. It's here to stay. And um, I think a lot of people who've been here who are seeing the changes, the shift. Like, I feel like we're in, um, we're kind of at a fork right now, right? At a crossroad. And um, we're, we're seeing the future, but then we're also seeing other opportunities where people are trying to latch on to the way things are, right? And um, I, I think it's up to us as the ecosystem to try to make sure that we realize that future. Definitely. Alicia, I'd Definitely. like to open that question up to you as well. What are some of the trends that you're seeing that you think people should be aware of? Well, I think that that really is a good point. But the the aspect of what we're seeing of how we've evolved, and we talk about the, the tech adoption curve all of the time here, but specifically with Bitcoin, because we can talk about that from just the 12 years that it's been here, how we've seen it go from the iteration of scam to it's still not really legal. It's still does, it's kind of suspect to now people and Fortune 500 carry it on their balance sheet. <laughs> but think of how quickly that has happened that in our lifetime. And that's a, a very short amount of time. That's the trend that has happened. And so we're seeing those kind of things happen much more quickly. And that also goes back to paralleling the internet in itself. You know, we had Web.0 when we were just kind of observers. We kind of just logged on, did a little chat, did whatever, got our email. 
Then we went to web 2.0 and we became the consumers. So then we kind of gave things away. We interacted in a different way and e-commerce obviously set that apart. That made it kind of solidified. And now we're in 3.0, we're moving very closely. And again, that technology curve is really, really close at hand. We're not seeing it take decades anymore from where you're like, oh, I remember AOL. Now we change technologies pretty much every couple of months now. Yes. That span of time of what blockchain are you using or what blockchain has come out, what DeFi platform, they're coming fast and furious. So what we're seeing is the proliferation of the technology being hit and used in a different way across the board. So now we're not seeing just one competitor, like you had one AOL. Mm -hmm. Now you have so many DeFi platforms that you have to really get to see like, what is different? What, what's in it for me? <laughs> Why do I need to come to your platform to do what I need to do? NFTs, obviously, are ruling the space right now. Because again, it, it connected itself to something, but I consider those hot and sexy items. So entertainment, art, all of those things have created that buzz where we know that NFTs are one of the oldest use cases out here. Um, used for authentication purposes only and it's like been there forever but now when you use it in this capacity we're seeing those things so we're going to see I think a lot of kind of high spikes and we're seeing them really close together so those are the trends that I think we're going to continue to see these really high high peaks and then it's like okay what what happens and there's just going to be a proliferation of people serving us and that's why we need to be astute consumers at this point even if we're not the builders of the technology as the consumer, we need to know why and what this technology can do for us and ask those questions of the developers. Yeah. yeah. I will say that a couple of the things that I've been paying attention to and just kind of stepping back and, uh, and it's interesting to me is I wrote a list here. Um, the first is the Coinbase IPO and the amount of money. And we started talking about this, Salisha, when we first started BBC, mm -hmm. we started talking about the, the amount of money that was going into what? Infrastructure, mm -hmm. getting people on the crypto and blockchain superhighway, more so the crypto superhighway. Now we're starting to see with the Coinbase I, uh, IPO and things like that, we're starting to see the um, manifestation of that. Uh, through NFTs, through people seeing practical use cases, et cetera. The second uh, thing that um, we talked about Bitcoin here, Ali brought up Bitcoin. Um, I'm going to bring two things up. Number one is there's a, a pretty famous investor named Kathy Wood, who's mm -hmm. running around saying, I could see Bitcoin at 500,000. Other people saying I could see a Bitcoin being a million dollars. So a lot of the media attention now, not just um, CNBC, which was how I found about, uh, out about crypto, but mm -hmm. mainstream media is now pretty much every day talking about what's happening with Bitcoin and, and things like that. Also, the last time I checked, there were over 50,000 people in Black Bitcoin billionaires on Coinbase, that's not Coinbase, Clubhouse, sorry, okay. uh, run by Lamar Wilson and Nadja Roberts. We're starting to see our people really interested. Now, some of them are interested because they think it's going to go to a million, they're going to be able to flip 10 grand. So there, there's going to be a lot of, <laughs> well... <laughs> I'm preaching to the choir here, um, <laughs> but there, there's going to be a lot of education, re-education, things like that be, as, as uh, all of this happens, but at least we're, we're seeing um, our people be interested when last time I checked, only 20% of the country is in crypto, mm -hmm. um, but, but our people seem to be getting this a little bit faster for once, which is a great thing. Um, so... Yeah, so those were the things that I kind of wanted to bring up, and I'm I'm continuously paying attention to those things, um, as well as other you know use cases. I want to see, um, well, not want to see. I'm waiting for NFT mainstream news to go from the digital artwork and kind of the funny stuff that we see to the more serious use cases that I think are less than a year around the corner. So yeah. when we start talking about tokenizing houses, real estate, um, uh, the infrastructure bill, for example, that Joe Biden just passed, there may be parts of that that are tokenized. 
that's where the real money is going to come in. And what I want to see us do is not just be rappers and um, other artists that, hey, let me, you know, do an NFT of my art, of my, um, they don't call the CDs anymore, whatever it is, album cover, whatever. I don't even know what the term is. Yeah. But, but for us to really be behind some of the more serious, more lucrative use cases that they've already and outlined. I mean, they're already here, but it's again, already this here. Is where, yeah. Right, this but is where the US definitely lags. Every other yeah. country has some aspect. We just saw India launch their product for tokenization of real estate mm -hmm. and it's land ownership and commercial buildings and whatnot. We've seen Japan launch theirs just two weeks ago. So we have, we're seeing these things take form. And again, utilizing the, the true application as it was intended with those kind of, like I said, just lay things that aren't really sexy and hot and cool, but those are those hardcore things that we're gonna need because we're gonna yeah. need to have those land deeds and you know patient information, all of those things that just kind of just every day are chunked away at, those are really being looked at. But again, this mm -hmm. is where the US has you know, bureaucracy Mm -hmm. And that is really inhibiting us from doing some of the things that other nations are doing much more uh, expedient than we are. Specifically, we're seeing the Caribbean take hold of this and do a whole lot of things from not only their infrastructure to even their own currency. They have the CDBCs are coming fast and furious. And no matter how you feel about that, they're really trying to push that because they want those digital assets for themselves and for their economy. And that will actually change their infrastructure with its usage. So when you see some of these things coming, it's like some things are domino effects. The minute that you put this into play, everything kind of falls into place right after that. Yeah, yeah. I definitely agree that it's bureaucracy that's really hindering our progress when it comes to this technology. Um, as you know, in every industry, in every sector, there's regulations, right? Mm -hmm. um, one of the uh, potential use case of NFTs that I've been privileged to involves um, medical research and de-identifying your medical data so that when researchers actually use your cells um, to do research, they can, if there's a breakthrough, right, with that particular cell, um, they can pinpoint the individual and their lineage and be able to help them, just like Henrietta Locks, right? Um, her lineage definitely, if given the opportunity, would have made money off of the historical usage of her um, DNA and her cells. So um, being able to tie that with an ind individual as opposed to what we currently do right now because of HIPAA, de-identifying those blood samples. Cause when you go to LabCorp or any of them out there, um, you know, they only use a small sample. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, that the rest of them, they de-identify it, scrub your name, scrub your identity, whatever. And then they sell it off to research facilities or institutions and, you know, next thing you know, like they're reaping the benefit off of that, but right. you're disassociated <laughs> from it. So using NFTs to tie it back to the individual, I think is very strong in that case. And that gives us a great intro to what, again, the Web 3.0 gives us the ability for ownership. Mm -hmm. This is where we talk about our own data and the ownership of that and how that's utilized across the internet at this point. I'm working currently with a health tech startup called Correlate Health, and they're doing that with regard to an NFT, having clinical trial information or just information that you really want to have. They, you know, the CARES Act does give the ability for the individual to own their own information. They want your whole health record is now available to you. But at this point, how do you know how to use it? You know, there's no compensation at this point until you give it to somebody to use. But how do you want that to be used? How much of that information and for what time frame? And that's what Correlate Health has done with creating a marketplace for people who want that information and for the patients who want to give that information, but also that reciprocity because you need to be paid for that information. It's no longer free. We're no longer having that unilateral, just give it to me because I say so. This is like, well, I, I'm going to give it to you, but you're going to have to give me some compensation in return, and you're only allowed to have it for 12 to 14 hours. And those are the kind of things that we're looking for. And that, again, is the capability of these applications. But we have to know what that is before we, again, go into utilizing that specifically. And that, I think that's where the developer, as well as the consumer, come together because the consumer says, this is what I want. 
this is how I want this to work. And the developer can then go through and say, okay, this is what we need in order to make that come through and be that, that functionality available to the consumer. Yeah, so I'm going to show uh, the BWBC website here, just so people are able to see it really quickly. So if you go to bwbc.io, the first thing you see here is BWBC and consensus partner to create a blockchain program. And then you're able to read about it and register for the program here. So I want to show people that. Um, and Ali, I, first of all, how did you partner with consensus and, you know, tell us kind of the background behind what you wanted to do with this program. Yeah. Um, uh, I'm trying to think back. Um, it's been a, it's been a long road, but we finally got here. So I'm really happy about that. Um, consensus reached out to us in 2019. And it was actually Truffles blockchain that reached out to us. And at that time, they were um, a well-known uh, blockchain developer company that simplifies the whole process, right? Um, and unbeknownst to us, they were in talks with consensus to merge with them. And unfortunately, because of COVID, a lot of things came up and we just couldn't get together and collaborate at that time. Um, luckily for us, um, that a, a pending hold or a wait time allowed them to go through their transition and being able to partner up with consensus gave them more capabilities to reach out to us and help us expand the program. Um, so the intention of the program is, as I said, to create um, 500,000 Black women blockchain developers, because currently right now um, in the developer the, the blockchain developer space, there's a, a roughly around 150 blockchain developers in the world. And there's a high demand- 150 or 150,000? I'm sorry, yes. 150,000, okay. 150,000, yes, <laughs> 150,000. Um, so there's a high demand, but short supply. And within those 150,000, we're like 1%, right? Um, and then within that, it's like, 0.01% Black females. And so my um, interest was to make sure that we're also part of the solution-oriented individuals, that we're creators in this space. Because as we know, historically, it's always the creators that make the money. And it's all about making sure that our community gets to tap into this wealth building that's about to happen or that's currently happening. And so the best way to do it is to tap into that rarity that's going on with the short supply of um, blockchain developer. And so um, the half a million is a target goal. I think it's a realistic target goal because our, our goal is to hit that by 2030. Um, currently right now, we have 10 black females who are going through the consensus bootcamp. It's a um, accelerated program that they're going through right now. It's similar in some regards to the program that we're establishing, and it's also different as well. The, the, the track that we're established, the program that we're establishing is gonna have two tracks. It's gonna have the developer track, which is more of the technical side, and then the non-technical side, which is more of um, business developer, individuals that get to sit at the table and discuss you know, how the company or um, you know, th their particular job or whatever are going to implement the program from starting to the beginning. So the, the intent is to be able to, one, be there from the beginning and also be there from the creator side as well. And that way we're able to tap into each other um, because these ladies will be in the same program together. They'll be going through similar tracks. Um, and then at the end of the day, they'll be networking with each other so that when one gets a job, the other one can say, hey, I know someone <laughs> who can help you out. Um, and that's the intent that um, is just to make sure that we are included. And um, you know, there's no excuse now, right? Because this is our rewrite. This is our way of saying that we are involved, we are here, and we can't give you excuses to say there's no Black people. Right. Okay. So I have like so many questions for you, but let's deal with the elephant in the room. Yeah. The men. Yeah. Can, can, can <laughs> men participate? Yes, 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 yes. 
our, our focus are Black women globally. Um, however, of the African diaspora, I want to clarify that. Um, however, our Black males can also get involved. Um, and we do strongly encourage that as well. Okay. Is the price still $25 to get into yes. the program? <laughs> yeah, that was one thing that I wanted to work with consensus in because, you know, they're a conglomerate in this industry. Um, I, I wanted to make sure that we make it affordable for our community because I don't want to have an entry barrier um, for people who are interested in this platform. Um, and uh, so, yeah, it's $25 uh, to join and, um, you know, going through the program and, and it actually was going to be free, but then we thought about it because oftentimes when something is free, people don't yeah, put too much value on it. it. Yeah. So we wanted to make sure that we have a price point that everyone on a global level can say, okay, well, I can afford that. It's not a barrier. So $25 is the amount. Y'all, $25 is practically free 99 in my <laughs> opinion. I mean, yeah, we, we blow $25, you know. It's with Starbucks the blink of an eye, right? <laughs> so the DoorDash order me. right there. Just one DoorDash order. Or oh, one DoorDash order or Talisha's Taco Bell. That's exactly. it. <laughs> um, so then let's talk about the return on investment. Mm -hmm. um, if somebody, uh, you know, what kind of salaries or our, our business, you know, potential return on investment people can get from uh, being a blockchain developer? Well, okay. So right now the, the figure is in the six, is in the, is in the six figures. Um, but the beauty about this is there, as I said earlier, there's a, a, a high demand, short supply. So literally you could come in and kind of write your own ticket in this space, um, especially if you're a black woman, because there's not a lot of us out there who are, you know, developers like Tisha. So, um, you know, you can go into a company and be and be able to set your own price. Um, and, you know, that's 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 one path that you can take to creating wealth, right? Because a lot of the times we don't get the opportunity to overvalue ourselves when it comes to jobs. But now here you are knowing that you got to you got a certification and you got to know with all to be in a space where there's a limited few, but there's a high demand. So you get to really write your own ticket at this point. I love that. Look, look, $25 to get in mm -hmm. and pretty much you could make a nice, you know, $150,000 salary coming out of it. So uh, next question, these are all rapid fire mm -hmm. age. You know, oh, yes. 21, 18, can I be 60 years old and still do it? Like, can I be 12? Can I get my 12 year old niece or somebody like that into it? You know, tell us about that. So currently it's intergenerational. There is no age limit. The only thing that we're requiring is for people to be able to code because it is learning how to code and it's a specific way of coding. Because we're partnering up with consensus, we're gonna uh, do the solidity. Um, coding, which is part of the Ethereum blockchain. Uh, so you will be learning that, but um, we want you to at least understand the basic concept of coding. If you don't, then we are trying to factor that in as well um, and try to create maybe a longer path for you to be introduced to coding. And then, you know, you, you get that impact, uh, impactful training there, and then you can move on to the blockchain process. Perfect. So if we, for example, if we don't know coding, could we take like a Python class or something like that? Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. there is a website. So if you want to test out your knowledge, there's a website called um, cryptozombies.io. Um, it's a little advanced, but it's fun. It's a, it's a gamified way of learning solidity. Um, and you know, it, it gives you an introduction. So there might be some people who understand Python and have actually gone through maybe the Udemy course and maybe halfway through like I did. <laughs> and then, you know, you could test your knowledge. And it's funny because even though it's been like a few years since I've done that, I still remember some of the function calling and all these things. I was like, oh, okay. I could like riding a bike. Like level one and went up to like halfway through level <laughs> we'll two. Remember. Yay. We'll remember. <laughs>
So I have one more question and we got a ton of questions in Q and A guys uh, and, and gals, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> just keep, keep bringing the questions. So uh, how long does it take your program from start to finish to complete it? And is it self-paced? Do you have groups of people that get together for study hall, you know, things like that. Uh, so, and Joy, we're going to put the website name into, I apologize for the dog. We're going to put the website name into the chat right now, but it's bwbc.io. Go ahead, uh, Ali. Yeah. So we're still working through a lot of the, we're still hashing through a lot of the process right now. Um, we're trying to make sure that it is a program that's aligned with people's work schedule, you know, and all kinds of stuff. And given that we're in a pandemic, you know, we don't want to stress you out. We do want to make sure that you're comfortable going through this process and that there's, you know, networks of people that are surrounding you, et cetera. Of course, you'll be able to tap into consensus developers and their network and stuff like that. But we want to make sure that it's a, a comfortable space for everyone. Um, so we're still building that out at the moment. Talisha, can you read the Q&A while I go and shut the dog up, please? Sure. Excuse me, everybody. <laughs> we have a question from Denise. She said, will you support different languages for blockchain development? Is it JavaScript, Python, and C++? I think you mentioned that it's just Python or... Solid. Well, no. Um, so we we will, and, and that's why I say if you go to, like the intention is for you to at least have the basic understanding of coding. Mm -hmm. um, I do believe that, um, you know, once we hash out the program, we're going to try to see what type of interest there are okay. there. Um, we are collecting information, right, and interest right now, mm -hmm. um, and then we'll start reaching out to people and doing a couple of surveys to make sure that we have the program that's aligned for them. But okay. we are cognizant of the fact that, you know, a lot of people have different type of coding languages that they've learned along the way. Very true. Thank you. Sharon asks, what does the pro when does the program start? It will be next year. I'm still trying to build that out. I can't really say for sure what day, but it's next year. Ms. Audrey asked that she said she put her information into the website. So what are the next steps can she expect? Okay, it's, it's a good job, Audrey. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so uh, the next step you will be, uh, I believe we're trying to start rolling out communications the middle of October. So you will start to receive some information and then um, and, and there'll be like a, a community for you to log into so that you can start to get familiar with the, um, the ecosystem, um, get basic blockchain education, network with different people, maybe even see job opportunities that are out there. And so you'll, you will start to get more uh, uh, communications coming your way. But right now we're just collecting interest. That's awesome. Those were most of those All right, Eva, thank you so much. Um, so I like your avatar. <laughs> Isn't it cute? Oh, thank sure. you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I, I had that um, drawn on Fiverr years ago. I, I, they, they would use computer programming in order to do it. So, but thank you. Um, yeah. So, you know, look, I'm super excited about uh, what you're doing. And um, put a one in the chat, everyone, if you've heard online, all of these people talking about winter is coming, winter is coming, winter is coming. I know I have, I'm sick of it. I'm like, I've never seen Game of Thrones. <laughs> I've seen yeah, you know <laughs> I, I haven't, and I refuse to, because my understanding is it's like addictive. Um, mm -hmm. But um, what I want to say to people is start, let's say that you do not know how to code today at all. You could, based on Ali's time frame, you could start off with the Python course now, take it like slowly, learn Python. Then by the time her, then you can actually like get a job with Python or JavaScript because someone had mentioned that as well, um, which, which I started even learning Python and now I know like Excel, so I was able to pick up on Python. If I had like actually focused on it, I could have really picked it up, but you could basically take that for four months, learn it, then get a job, you know, uh, entry level job, I don't know, 60, 70, $80,000, I would say. Um, and then when Ollie's 
program opens up, then you could take that. You could be at a whole different tax bracket and with a whole different group of people in less than a year, by summer of next year, potentially. Um, I just want to offer hope to people with regards to this. Yeah, it's going to be hard, you know, but you're not alone. You can come into the Discord group. There are developers that are in there. Um, one of the things I'm a fan of is ask somebody if you can work on their project mm -hmm. for free, uh, because there's no better way to learn something like this than to get in a project and say, I don't know how to do that, you know, and then you can get a mentor to help you kind of work through some of the, the struggles and issues you're having. Um, and then the final thing is there are a lot of tools that are out there, uh, Talisha can attest to this, that um, makes coding easier too. So you don't have to start off with a blank slate <laughs> of, you know, that's, that's my understanding when coding started, a lot of people had to start off with a blank slate all the time. Now mm -hmm. you don't, now you're able to say, I need this to do this. And there's oftentimes like pre-written code that you can pull from. And then you're able to start thinking strategically about how you want things to look. So ladies, I definitely wanted to, I know I said a, a, a lot there, but I wanted to kind of throw that out to uh, the two of you as well. Yeah, so, no, my question would be, so is it is it just going to be Solidity starting out and then the others kind of coming through because that will actually help people kind of direct their, their efforts if they're trying to take your, this course right here? Yeah, I mean, as you know, um, Every year, there's a new programming language that's coming out. <laughs> um, now with Solana, you know, to talk about that a, a set for a second. I was, was um, going to segue right in right? there. Yeah, right? <laughs> I was going there. <laughs> <laughs> so there, there will be opportunities to learn others. Um, I just think mm -hmm. right now, Ethereum is, you know, the dominant right. um, one. It's, it's how we were introduced to smart contracts. So Correct. there's a lot of... Uh, programs being built off of it. There's a there's a need, right? Um, and so, therefore, that's our focal point at this point. But I I have been asked <laughs> for Black women who know how to do Rust or some or a developer who knows you know how to code in Rust. And you know if if that's something that you're currently going through and you do understand it, please reach out to me because I'm always you know connecting with people who are saying, hey, I need someone. Can you connect me with someone? Can you reference someone, et cetera? Um, I wanted to say something about what Sheree, uh, Sheree said. Um, you know, it, it's, it's, it's very important for you to um, you consider coding because look, we're, we're in the technology age. There's no going back, right? Um, and a lot of jobs and positions will be, um, you know, geared towards developers. Uh, so even your kids, right? We got to think about them because they're they're into Roblox, and Roblox is about building lands and building, you know, all kinds of stuff, right? Minecraft, all these things. So they should be aware of coding as well. So if they have opportunities at school to start learning that, definitely, you know, um, tap into that for them. There's like Scratch dot um, MIT dot edu for kids, which basically is like the building blocks of coding. Um, there's code.org. Um, there's free code academy as well that you can tap into um, as an adult. Um, and if you're not into the technical route, that's also okay because we do have the non-technical route. And I think it's important because if you look at, if you Google search blockchain positions, um, you will see various kinds. You'll see the developer, you'll see the marketing, you'll see the sales, you'll see everyone. Like really whatever skill set that you have right now, they're trying to transform it into the blockchain ecosystem. And companies are looking for everyone. Just, you know, you, they, they just want you to have the basic understanding of what the technology is. Yeah, I mean, so I, I love this. Um, I just want to show the website again, just so people are able to see exactly where to go. So this is the website here, bwbc.io. Right here, you see about BWBC and consensus, create a blockchain program. If you uh, go to the, click on this uh, link here, then you end up here building with blockchain. You enter a few key pieces of information. Even if you're not sure if you want to participate, enter your information. That way you don't, 
forget about it <laughs> and then come back three years from now and say, oh, I could have done this three years ago. Just enter your information, get on the email list. I'm definitely going to get on the email list myself uh, here. So, um, and then Sharon is saying, uh, this is great. I'm very excited. I'm glad I found this info. I was working on learning Java, but I guess I should switch to Python. So should Sharon switch to Python uh, versus Both Java? Are. Both are very important. Both are important. Um, a lot of, and I'm sure Talisha would agree that, you know, a lot of um, platforms that you see now does incorporate Java into it, right? Python is the, I guess, the fun, popular one, but Java is very important. Yeah, these are interoperability kind of skills too. And I think this is kind of the, the question of which one to begin with, wherever you are right now, learning the language is fine. If you wanna, like she said, the solidity is going to be the top priority because that is where smart contracts are mostly written in at this point in time. So again, just being exposed to it. And if you wanna learn it, then, then learn it. <laughs> but I also think this is where the technical and non-technical kind of, there's a sliding ruler here. Knowing about it is being technical. You don't have to always program it and be that hardcore programmer because sometimes you're the person who just, again, puts all the business requirements or the functionality requirements together. So you just have to use the language that they're using specifically to be able to communicate, I need this, I need this function call. You're not coding it at all. You're just using their language. And secondarily, I think these are the kinds of things the exposure will give you so much in any of those languages. They're very much the same. They have some very core competencies that look all the same. I say it's almost like learning Latin. You get the root and then you kind of, you can speak Spanish, you can speak French, you can, you can move through them because they're kind of the same. So again, I just always say to look and kind of explore. This is where YouTube is your best friend. Kind of go out there and look at different people giving you the instruction because sometimes that's the biggest kind of, I think, obstacle. It's not learning the language, it's learning who to learn the person who's teaching you the language is not always receptive. So you have to find who best speaks to you and gives you that information in the way that's most palpable to you to learn the language before you ever invest in any kind of course, because that's the most important thing. You don't want to have to, you know, drudgery through something that's already kind of challenging by having a professor or instruction that doesn't really speak to you. So that's kind of the, the core thing that I want in there. I know there's two questions in here. Denise asked, mm -hmm. will there be support such as tutoring and coaching and things that I think you said there will be an ecosystem that helps people along. Mm -hmm. And it says, what other ways can we get involved to support this phenomenal opportunity? So is there any um, other way that we can share this out to the, to the masses? Yes, please. Um, as I said, it's a, it's a global initiative. Um, so we want to tap into the entire diaspora. So if you can help us spread the news, um, when we put out the press um, release, we tapped into Europe, we tap into Africa, you know, um, but we just want to make sure that everyone is aware of this. Um, I, I, if, you, if you know how to code and you're willing to come on board and help us, then definitely, you know, we're opening our arms and welcoming you on board. Um, if you have uh, you know, uh, experience in setting up uh, programs like this historically, uh, then definitely, you know, I like to tap into your knowledge, um, get some information about how we can make this more effective for the community, for sure. And I, I know a lot of people have been asking about younger kids and um, there are some high schools that I am reaching out to, but I even wanna tap into the, even younger um, generations as well. And so if you have experience, educational you know, experience tapping into um, you know, younger, ed educating younger kids, then definitely reach out to us because this is an area that I believe will definitely benefit them. Um, just imagine like you're in what, junior high and you get to high school and you're like, <laughs> you know this. <laughs> you're, you're making money. <laughs> yes, that's yeah, all awesome perfect. jobs, uh, yeah, awesome yeah. side hustles for them. Yes. Oh, question from uh, Daniel. He's asking about partnerships with your organization. He has a security firm, a blockchain security firm. So oh, yes. oh. that we might be a perfect that. person to contact <laughs> to because security and, and uh, you know, blockchain go hand in hand. Yes, yes. Oh, okay. So as I said, my background is cybersecurity. So I would love to talk to you, Daniel. Um, reach out to me at info at bwbc 
Io, and yeah, we can start talking and connecting because, as you know, um, one of the uh, the the main important components about the technology is the cryptography, and I think that's very important for people to understand and know about. And it's also how you code the hashes together. Um, so that's going to be an area that we want to focus on because oftentimes when you hear about these breaches out there, people are copy and pasting faulty, you know, um, codes and not really being cognizant of the fact that perhaps there's a line there that's not as secure as it should be. Uh, mm -hmm. So we want to make sure that, you know, our people are educated in that as well. Perfect. Awesome. Perfect. Well, um, one of the things that I wanted to ask you about is um, I'm surprised that Consensus didn't already have a program set up that you were just tapping into. Yeah. So do you see BWBC being able to leverage the fact that you all are helping to develop this program and Consensus is probably going to use it to train other groups of people? Uh, do you see you know, a way for you to, and your organization, to uh, be able to profit from this as well, because I'm sure putting this together is um, very time consuming, you know, mm -hmm. and, and all of that. Yeah. Um, so just to clarify, consensus, they have on an annual, I think it's, it might be biannual, they do have a, a boot camp um, and it's an accelerator boot camp. So it's similar to what we're trying to create, but different in nature as well. Um, but yeah, so the, the, the way that we see it is when we create a community of people that um, have the, the resources, the capability, the experience to do what the industry needs, then they know where to go to tap into them. Um, so you know, we're, we're hoping to be the facilitator um, and uh, be the people that people reach out to, to be able to tap into a developer, or be able to tap into someone who can maybe educate um, various ages on blockchain, et cetera. And as, as you guys know, one thing that we like to do is promote what the uh, black women in this ecosystem do. Um, and so, you know, if someone is looking for certain things, I'm, I have you guys to reach out to as well, right? Um, and, the, and that's what I love. I mean, that's my mission. Like my goal is because I've been in spaces where I've been the only black person and it's not fun. It really is. Oh, and um, there's you don't have cheerleaders. Right. And you go through so many different turmoils that it, having a support there, knowing that, you know, your community is there, knowing that you you're not by yourself is is there's strength in that. And that's what I wanted to create for our people. Um, and, you know, the ability to say, you know what, I'm, I'm good. I'm, I'm making money. I'm doing this. I'm creating. And we, and, and not to, not to, you know, um, minimize the fact that we are literally developing creators, right? Um, and so now when we want to create our own medical, you know, NFT related NFTs or, you know, for the financial um, issues that we're going, um, that we're facing, we can tap into developers, we can tap into um, individuals who have that idea and the capabilities of bringing it forth, right? We don't have to wait for other people to recognize us, we can create our own thing. And I think that's very powerful. Right. And I will say this as well, if you are somebody who, like me, um, you have, you know, ideas and you want to be able to hire a developer, but you want to be able to test them and know that they know what they're talking about. Taking something like this may be helpful for you as well so that you can hear, like right now I call Denise and I call Talisha, you know, <laughs> I'm like, there's this person full of, you know, crap, right? <laughs> but, you know, I also want to know for myself, you know, uh, how to be able to um, gauge the information and be able to look in the code and see, okay, yes, this looks right, this makes sense, et cetera. Um, so, you know, that, that's another reason for you to consider 
uh, joining this program. I have put my information in Ali uh, officially. So, you know, I definitely am on the list to uh, be, you know, in touch uh, with regards to this. So uh, Jerry's asking if we're in Chicago. Uh, no, um, none of us are in Chicago. Uh, but, you know, that's one of the great things about Zoom and, and the internet. <laughs> it doesn't matter where we are. Um, we're able to pull people together based on like minds. Um, any final comments? Oh, Karega is asking if you need instruct instructors, Ali. Yeah, please. Like if you're interested in being an instructor, send an email. Um, and if you have additional questions, send an email to info at bwbc.io. We definitely are looking for, you know, those of you who are interested in helping us create this program because I, I strongly believe in it. Um, this is, this is like, I feel like this is what I've been working towards for the longest time. And I'm finally happy that it, you know, it's coming to fruition. Um, and also you mentioned earlier, Cherie, um, you know, financially, like we, we definitely are encouraging sponsors. We're trying to put our sponsorship package together. So if you're interested, please let me know as well. Great. Perfect. Uh, Talisha, final comments. I think always this was something that we talked about very early on for a while so that is coming to fruition is so exciting and I'm so heck happy for you and I do think everyone should at least try I think this is again something that gives you exposure and it may not be you know something that you're going to commit to in the sense of like you're a hardcore coder because most times people know that already if you aren't and you're pretty much like on that fence you're probably not but this, this going through this process may give you some insights that will be very invaluable to you. As a consumer, as I said, this is where we get to start to look and evaluate things based upon your own needs. And because you are armed with this information, you're better able to readily identify what's good, what's bad, even in the crypto space, even in all of these other projects, you can be able to assess like, oh, that, that's not even feasible. That's not workable. So you'll be able to kind of go through this process much more seamlessly and much more educated as an educated consumer, therefore getting much more bang for your buck when you do interact with any of these products that are out there. Yeah. Uh, Ali, final words? Oh, wow. I just want to thank you, ladies, once again. It's always a pleasure being um, on camera with you, ladies, and I always have enjoyed it. Um, I want to encourage everyone to definitely consider joining the program. As we said, there's uh, two tracks. Um, there's the technical side and the non-technical side. So if you figure out that you're not really that interested in the technical side, you could always jump to the non-technical side. Um, it still goes through the blockchain basics. It gives you a high level overview of what goes into the coding, uh, what's important, something for you to be cognizant about when it comes to developing that program for your particular company. So I think both tracks are very important. And um, I encourage everyone that's interested, uh, maybe not in the program, but helping us uh, facilitate the program or maybe even funding <laughs> um, to reach out to us. So uh, we are looking for everyone to help. Great. So um, the first thing that I will say is um, put me down for a small dollar donation. You know, if there are four young ladies, for example, or even eight young ladies that uh, want to take the course, you know, eight times 25, I can definitely do that. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm all about, um, you know, sponsoring. Maybe there are just some young ladies that just can't or gentlemen, young, young men uh, either that can't do it. So you can let me know about that. Um, the final thing that I will say is thank you uh, for being here. And I spoke uh, about two weeks ago to a gentleman who invests, he's an angel investor in blockchain projects. He invests in startups as well as growing uh, blockchain projects. So put a one in the chat if you would be interested in me inviting him, because I told him about BBC and I asked him if he would be willing to come and and talk to us about his process of selecting companies to invest in. Okay, so I'm seeing the one. So I have access to him. His name is Dan. Um, I'm going to see if I can get him. In, it may be a month from now. He's a super busy guy. It may be in the daytime. I don't know. I got to, you know, be flexible with his schedule. But I thought it'd be interesting just to hear from him. Uh, with regards to what he's doing in the industry. He just sponsored a big Africa and AI, and AI conference 
uh, last week as well, mm -hmm. the virtual conference. So, um, you know, so he seems to want to do work with, with us. And uh, some of you may have projects that you're looking for funding for, or, you know, you just want to learn uh, that process. So I will WhatsApp him and we will uh, try to get on the schedule to get him in. Kalisha, my partner, Kraft, thank you very much for being here with me. You're for welcome. agreeing to uh, Make sure you join um, the, the Discord group if you're not in there, because again, I'll drop some resources for you to learn Solidity and some other things. And if you have some questions that you want to ask me, that's where I am. So you can feel free to buzz me there. Yes. Yeah, so the way to get to the Discord group is go to blackblockchainconsultants.com and it'll forward you right to the Discord group. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Have Thank a great you. night. Bye-bye. Good evening, everyone.